Welcome. Today is Wednesday, November 23rd. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'm Jeff Huge, Chief Investment Officer at JWH Investment Partners, and I'm the founder of Alpha Insights. And this is your Daily Five. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Um, and to begin, I just want to kind of remind everybody, we do have a free newsletter. I think everybody who's been a regular watcher of this show knows that by now. But if you haven't, if you're new to the show, uh, you can sign up for our free newsletter. Just go to my website, jwhinvestment.com. Uh, we deliver it on the first Saturday of every month. So the next one will be on uh, December 3rd. And that's actually going to be our year ahead forecast issue. So it's going to be our kind of 2023 outlook. And I encourage everybody to uh, take a look at that. We do actually have a member level option for those who want uh, more uh, the newsletter is mostly just kind of big picture macro sort of data. But, you know, people always want ideas. And, and we publish something called the Idea Generator Lab. And that goes out every Wednesday afternoon uh, to our newsletter members. It's a $10 a month option. Uh, it's not required by any stretch. But, uh, you know, if you're a swing trader and you're looking for idea flow, it might be for you. So um, just as uh, as we close out this, I want to mention that if you're watching this on YouTube, we will have a bonus slide uh, at the end. So uh, with that, we'll kick off with slide number one. And we've entitled this the 10-year yield factor. You know, as all will know, the 10-year treasury yields played a pretty uh, influential role in this year's stock market route. And, you know, as yields have risen, stocks have declined with a negative correlation of around 86%. Now, um, this really broke, or the rates really broke out uh, at the beginning of the year in uh, February, March, uh, really, you know, right in January, in fact, uh, as we penetrated above the 175 level, concomitant with rising inflation data. And stocks actually just plummeted in January on that move. And as inflation continued to accelerate higher, the Fed has hiked their benchmark funds rate in kind. Now, this is not news to anybody. Inflation probably peaked in June at 9.1% and has been trending lower. Uh, the chart that we're looking at has the CPI annualized month over month uh, change at the bottom and the Fed funds rate increases marked at the top in the month in which they've occurred. And so, you know, um, since uh, inflation peaked in June, the Fed has actually been quite aggressive. They have raised by around 300 basis points, and it's expected that they'll raise another 50 in December. Um, so it doesn't really matter that um, inflation is declining. It, what matters is what the Fed is doing. And the two seem to be loosely connected. But uh, at the end of the day, as long as inflation is um, materially above the Fed funds rate, then I would expect the Fed funds rate to continue to rise. And um, there has been some, you know, chatter uh, coming out of the Fed uh, that, um, you know, the, the terminal rate's going to be something north of 5%, 5, 5 and a quarter is what the consensus has baked in. Um, some Fed officials have remarked uh, that it could be as high as 7%. Certainly that's not guaranteed, but, you know, throwing it out there. At the end of the day, it's clear that the Fed isn't going to start lowering rates anytime soon. Uh, but if we look at this chart, we can see that the 10-year bond yield actually doesn't believe Fed officials. Uh, despite their, you know, hawkish statements to the contrary, um, most market participants believe that the Fed is going to be forced to pivot at some point. And uh, we don't know when that's going to be, but the 10-year bond yield has turned down from recent highs of around four and a quarter, 430, uh, to its current levels of 376 as of yesterday's close. And it looks like 10-year bond yield support is around 350. The question is, will that hold? Our view is, yes, we think it's going to hold. Uh, we think rates are going to blast off and move substantially higher because we don't think it's probable that the Fed will lower the Fed funds rate for at least a year, possibly 18 months. Now, they may stop raising sometime next year, but we don't think that they're going to lower that. And we don't expect uh, the 10-year bond yield to trade at a 200 basis point discount to uh, the Fed funds rate. So we do think rates are going to move more in tandem with the Fed funds rate. And I would expect to see that 10-year bond yield move back up uh, to the upper fours, possibly 5% in the not too distant future. With that, I expect the stock market to roll over and move hard down to new lows. Uh, let's talk about the next chart. Chart number two is just 
you know, an update on our long-term Elliott Wave options. We've talked about this repeatedly. Um, you know, we don't have an agenda here, uh, contrary to, you know, popular opinion. Um, we're just looking at the data. And our preferred count uh, assumes that the January high was the end of cycle wave five. We've counted five waves up at multiple degrees of trend, and it makes sense uh, at this point to consider that to be the end of cycle wave five. And with that, we expect at least a cycle wave correction, uh, which should take us down into the mid 2000s uh, at some point within the S&P's contacts. So under this rubric, we think that the June low counts best as primary wave one down of cycle wave A down. And the August high counts best as cycle wave, or, I'm sorry, primary wave two up of cycle wave A down. And if that's correct, then we are in the early subdivisions at this point of primary wave three down of cycle wave A down. Now, um, it's also possible to uh, count the initial decline into the June low as um, uh, primary wave A. In other words, cycle wave A should subdivide into five waves down, but it's possible that it could subdivide into three waves down as an ABC. So at primary degree, if that were to be the case, then the June low could be uh, primary wave A down, which means that everything since June is an up, down, up move that marks what's probably a regular flat wave correction, and that would be primary wave B. Now, the question is, uh, where will primary wave B terminate? And we've indicated on the alternate count chart, which is the chart on the right, uh, that we could break out above that 200-day moving average. And if we did, that would probably be the, the first compelling piece of evidence that the alternate count is currently operative. Um, but if we did break out above that 200-day moving average, we could see a full 61.8% retracement of the decline between the January top and the June lows. And that would be typical of a flat wave B wave correction. So um, I would assume that that would be the case if we took out the 200-day moving average. Other than that, I'm pretty convinced with a high probability, at least 70% probability at this point, that the preferred count is operative. And if in fact that's the case, we should take a look at the short-term options that the market has. And that's chart number three. So chart number three is really just kind of looking at our short-term Elliott wave count since the August 16th high, that would be the primary wave two high. From that point, we've counted five waves down at intermediate degree of trend. And, you know, we've actually, you know, counted it down at minor degree and um, minute degree of trend as well. So it's very clear that we have five waves down uh, at at least intermediate degree of trend. And that marks the October 13th low. Since that time, we've seen a very choppy, overlapping advance uh, that's followed. And from that, we must conclude that the rally is of the counter trend variety. We should not be seeing big overlapping moves between prior highs with new lows. That is not in indicative of an impulsive move, which would suggest that this is not the beginning of a new bull market, but is in fact a bear market rally. And so our view is that the counter trend advance in the S&P um, off the October 13th low has the potential to extend to S&P 4118, which would be where wave uh, Y would actually be equal to wave W, which is a pretty common wave relationship. And in so doing, it would actually fill the chart gap, that open chart gap back on uh, September 12th. And uh, that would be a pretty logical place for the market to terminate its advance. And we would call that intermediate wave two, which should be followed by intermediate wave three of primary wave three down. And that should be a rather aggressive decline. Now, there's one other possibility. If we get materially above that 41.18 level, it's possible that the market wants to retrace 78.6% of the August, October decline. That comes into play at S&P 4147. But in either case, we would expect the rally to fail and primary wave three down to resume the bear market's decline under this rubric. Chart number four. Our trend following model has a 
impeccable track record of identifying major trend changes. Again, we don't have an agenda here. The data is bearish at this point, and the data suggests that we're in a bear market rally. The trend following model, this is our long-term trend following model, and it consists of a baseline moving average, which is in red, and that defines the major trend of the market, and then also a faster exponential moving average in green just below it right now. And that defines signals. It uses a three to two ratio. Now, most recently that model triggered a negative signal as stock prices came off their February highs. We use that as a, um, a signal to get materially more bearish, okay? Since that time, the signal line has trended below the major trend line. And uh, at this point, we don't see any evidence that that is changing. You know, we've seen a, an upturn in the signal line, but it has not crossed above. And so, you know, most recently, um, the model triggered that negative signal. Uh, we are often asked what it's going to take to turn us bullish. Well, you know, a positive signal, in other words, the exponential moving average turning above the base trend moving average would be an initial indication. Uh, that things are changing. So that would be the first criteria that would turn us bullish. And so far, you know, we're almost 100 S&P points away from that happening. Uh, so I am not uh, concerned that that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, let's look at chart number five. Chart number five is our long-term momentum model. Another criteria that would give us pause about the bear case would be a positive reversal signal from our long-term momentum model. That is to say that any positive month-over-month -month reading, for example, uh, the October 31st monthly close in our long-term momentum model was negative 14.34. If the November 30th monthly closing level were to come in at, say, just negative 14.0, that would constitute a positive month-over-month -month reading, and that would be a bullish signal. Unfortunately, for that to occur, the S&P 500 would need to close the month of November at approximately 4450. Uh, I don't see that happening, so I'm not terribly concerned that that's going to occur. And in fact, as of last night, uh, the negative uh, re the reading on the uh, long-term momentum model was negative 18 and change. So you know we're some distance away from uh, getting an uptick in that. However, um, you know the required closing price for the S&P actually declines pretty sharply in the first quarter of next year as the higher price data of the S&P 500 itself from the fourth quarter of 2021 will drop out of the 12-month calculation. So, you know, looking at that, I think that there's a pretty good chance that we could see a durable low and a reversal in this model sometime in the first quarter of next year. Now, um, this is our bonus chart, and this is what I just wanted to bring to um, both our, our, our uh, fans and our critics. So 12 month results. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked us how our performance has been this past year since we've been very bearish. In fact, some people have labeled us as perma bears simply because we've remained cautious during this, uh, you know, rally off the October 13th low. In fact, we are just old school stock pickers. And um, as our newsletter members will know, our Alpha Insights Idea Generator Lab publication presents our top actionable trade idea each Wednesday to newsletter members. And um, this is a long only stock picking strategy that is designed for swing traders with a one to three month time horizon. And uh, the total performance of that has been 26.47% uh, over the last year, actually the last 372 days which is since the NASDAQ 100 peaked. And so we've put out 42 long ideas uh, that have been actionable. Uh, they have beat the S&P 500 by over 40 percentage points. S&P is down over 14% over the same period. About 38% of those have been winners. Uh, the rest have been losers. Our average win has been up just under 16%. Our average loss has been less than 6%. And so, you know, as George Soros once said, um, it's not how often you're right or wrong that matters. It's how much money you make when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong. And so, you know, our philosophy has been to uh, lose as little as possible, cut our losers short, let our winners run. 
And uh, if you're interested in a steady flow of long only swing trade ideas, um, we publish this for members every Wednesday. Uh, just become a member of our newsletter. It's $10 a month to do that. It's pretty cheap. And you get four fresh ideas a month. Uh, so it costs less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Anyways, with that being said, um, I want to thank you today for taking the time to uh, watch this. And, um, you know, if you want to get in touch with us, go to our website at jwhinvestment.com or follow us on Twitter at alpha underscore insights. We're also live every Tuesday at 9 a.m. on OETV, where you can find us on LinkedIn or just send us an email. Uh, again, I want to thank you for watching and wish you good luck trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.